Hey everyone, welcome to The Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. If you're new to my channel, my name's Leslie, and I'm so tickled and pleased to have you here and would love for you to hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you have, thank you so very much. We're getting ready for homecoming at church. That's what we're cooking up. We're cooking up a chicken pierre casserole for our homecoming at church. If you haven't subscribed, the intro's a good time to do it. So roll that intro. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. And get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is Okay, so like I said, we're making chicken pierre casserole. I have done this casserole humpteen times on this channel and it's what I'm making today, so we're gonna do it again. I've had some people say, that's not the chicken pierre casserole I know. Chicken pierre casserole has this and this or this and this. And, and I don't know how to answer that because this is not my original recipe. This, I got this from some somewhere. And so, and it's what it was called when I got it. And that's therefore what I've kept calling it. So it may not be like your chicken pierre casserole. I don't know. Um, so anyway. All right, guys, I'm trying to open up some sour cream here, and I'm struggling. Give me just a minute. Okay, there we go. Maybe. All right. So the first thing I want to do is, after I clean my hands off, I have sour cream all over. <laughs> um, one of the things you're going to need, I have already boiled up chicken breast. All I did was I covered it with water. I put some poultry seasoning, salt, pepper, and a little bit of bouillon or chicken base or whatever you use you don't even have to use anything but um so now that's already done I, I set it on boil i boiled it for like 30 minutes and then i put the lid on and turned it down to simmer and let it simmer a little while and then i cut it off because i had somewhere to go cut it off and now it's ready for me to come in here and deal with but first i want to take this dried beef this is the 2.5 ounce dried beef and I'm just going to take it and cut it up into well I usually just cut it in half and then in half again and um let's let it go further and I'll cut these now I'm making two of these casseroles so um so we're going to set these aside over here. And um, since we're making two, I'm going to go ahead and chop up my other jar. Just while I got, while I'm doing that on the cutting board, I might as well go ahead. And then when I get the chicken out, I don't have to chicken juice, you know, broth everywhere. So, okay, let me cut that up and I'll be right back. Okay, so what we're going to start with here is... Um, one can of cream of chicken soup. I use a lot of the cream of chickens. I know people like to sometimes steer away from them, but I, I use them. They're very, they're a convenience item for me. Um, I can make my own, and I've been meaning to show y'all how to make our own. But it's just, I ha always have them on hand, so... Okay, so to the can of cream of chicken, we're going to add a cup of sour cream. This is a third cup measuring spoon. So we're going to, we're just going to eyeball here. Here's a third. Here's a third. a cup. 
All right, so now we can season this with whatever we want to season it with. Um, I'm going to use, sometimes I use ranch dressing, the dried ranch dressing. Today, we're just going to go pretty basic. I'm going to use some seasoning salt and some black pepper. Remember, I seasoned my chicken pretty good um, when I was boiling the chicken. Of course, y'all didn't see that, but I did season it up with salt, pepper, um, bouillon, poultry seasoning. All right. So here we go. All right, so let's go ahead and to this, let's go ahead and add our dry beef that I've cut up into little pieces. And I'm gonna switch spoons here. I'm gonna get me a little sturdier spoon because once we add that chicken, we're gonna need the sturdiness of it. So I have, I had a package of four very large chicken breasts. They were very large. So this is just two of them. Um, and this may be more than plenty. Right, let me work that in and then we'll see. We'll try to add the rest. It's a pretty stiff casserole at this point. Of course, once you bake it. Now, I won't bake this off. You could definitely, by all means, bake this right now. Um, I won't be baking it off till in the morning just because I want it to still be hot when um, when I get to church. Not that it'll be hot <laughs> when we get to lunch, but at least it'll still be warm when I get to church. All right. So there goes in two very large chicken breasts. Now, you could definitely, because everything's cooked, you could definitely taste this at this point to see, do I need to add anything? Um, if, if you were running low on sour cream, you could add in a scoop of mayonnaise. Um, does it need garlic? Does it need more pepper? So you could taste it at this point. I'm pretty, I've made this so many times, I'm pretty confident right here. I'm going to get my tin pan, spray it, and I'll be right back. Okay, here are my tin pans. Somebody asked me the other day, do I put these on a cookie sheet? And what an excellent, excellent question. Um, it depends on how heavy what I have in it is. These that I get at Sam's are pretty sturdy. And so, no, I don't always put them on a cookie sheet. But if I'm doing something that's really heavy and when it comes out, I don't want it to the pan to bend, then yes, I would put it in a on a cookie sheet. So, Yes and no. Yes, I think that's a wise decision to always put it on a cookie sheet. Do I always do that? No. Uh, only because these that I get at Sam's are pretty sturdy. If I got one at the dollar store or maybe Walmart, yeah, I would I would um, probably put them on a cookie sheet. And if I was doing a ham or a whole chicken or something like that, I would definitely do it. Um, All right, now we have more to go on this, and that'll go on in the morning. Um, we're going to top it with a pack of Ritz and butter. Everything's better with butter. All right, I'm going to use that bowl again because I have another one of these casseroles to put together. Oh, and it's another thing. It's not a very thick, like a deep. It's not going to be a very deep casserole. You're going to think, what is this? But I'm telling you, it when, when the heat hits it and this all softens up and it's so good. So good. Okay, I'm going to wrap this in tin foil, put it in the refrigerator, and I will bake it off in the morning before I go to church. Not sure if I'll be dressed and makeup on, so who knows how you'll see me, but... All right. There you have it, a chicken pierre casserole. Very simple, very easy. Um, if you did not want to boil your chicken breast, 
another idea, another great, awesome, awesome hack idea. A rotisserie chicken. Get you a rotisserie chicken, pull the skin off, pull it off the bone. There you have your chicken meat for your casserole. Such a great hack and um, easy solution. Okay, I'm going to put this other one together. I will see you guys in the morning when it comes time to bake these off. Good night. All right, here we are this morning. Leslie's behind the camera, and I'm on this side because she's in her pajamas. And uh, it's early. It's about 6 o'clock on homecoming Sunday morning, and we need to get this in the oven. The oven has preheated already to 375 degrees. We're going to turn it down to 350 before we put it in. Hey, the first thing, first thing we're going to do is to take this stick of butter, and we're going to uh, put it in this little uh, uh, bowl right here. And I'm going to put it in the microwave. And I have to melt this butter because I'm going to pour it over the, um, the Ritz crackers here in just a second. So uh, let me show you how I'm going to crush the Ritz crackers, okay? I don't know if you guys have seen this before. This is how I do it. Just do it like this. You can, some people put it in a Ziploc bag and do it that way. I choose not to do that because uh, you can um, you mess, up, mess a bag. up mess up a bag. And you can just do it right here. And uh, you just use the same container. That way you don't mess up anything. You can get them however fine you want. I think I got them about the right consistency. I just kind of sprinkle left to right. Some of you have asked about the size of this pan. It's close to a 9 by 13. I think it's a, uh, a little, not quite a 9 by 13. If you're wanting to know for basis of what to cook it in at your house, cook it in a 9 by 13. Hey, but I'm going to measure it here in just a second. So. But the bot, the top's wider than the bottom. Yeah, because it, it tapers in. It tapers in. Okay. All right, I'm going to melt this butter. That's uh, that's the topping. I'm going to melt this butter, and I'll bring you right back. All right, guys, very quickly, I'm going to take here and melt this butter. I'm going to take this little measuring spoon because it gives me more control. I'm just going to drizzle back and forth, left to right, trying not to... Uh... Now, you could certainly mix the butter in with the Ritz prior to sprinkling it, but that's just messing up another... And they sprinkle, and they just sprinkle easier if they're not mm -hmm. wet, okay? And if you want to go a little lighter, and you don't want to do the whole stick, that's up to you, but that butter gives it some goodness right there, so. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go right here. It's yep. ready. Yep. And we're going to slide it in the pre-baked, uh, the preheated oven right here. For about 30 minutes. Uncovered for about 30 minutes. Turn it long way so you can get the other one in. All right. Just like that. Hey, I measured, it, I measured it off camera a while ago while the butter was melting. And it's nine inches wide by, what was it, 10? 11, 11, 11 and a half. 11 and a half long. I couldn't remember. So um, a nine by 13 will be fine. It will just be a little, a little thinner. A little bit thinner, yeah. Or whatever your next smallest Pyrex or casserole dish is, it will be fine. Depends on how thick you want it. So we'll bring you back when it's ready to come out. Well, y'all, guess what? We did not film the chicken casseroles coming out of the oven, <clears throat> nor did we do a taste test on them. And so when I realized it and we got them home, or when I, I thought, well, we'll just taste them when we get home, because I'm sure I'll have a little leftover, there was nothing, not even my pan was left. <laughs> so we did not have any leftovers from the chicken casserole at all. I will tell you, it is a wonderful, a delicious chicken casserole that you need to fix. Where it got its name, I don't know. If it's the original chicken pier, I don't know, but that's what we call it. And um, it is absolutely delicious. So if you get a chance, go ahead and make that. Okay, so anyway, sorry you didn't get to see the finished product, but take my word for it. It is absolutely out of this world. It's one of our staples. We make it all the time here. So thank you so much for watching The Farm and Pastor's Wife. And remember, the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.